Wickets continue to tumble on the second day of the LV County Championship match at the Emirates Old Trafford as Essex claimed the edge over their hosts, Lancashire. 11 wickets had fallen on the first day and had Lancashire held on to their catches, there may have been many more. And the second morning began in the same way, with Carl Brown edging the eighth ball of the day, bowled by Rhys Topley to Alistair Cook. The two nearly combined again in Topley's next over. This time, though, the edge fell just short of the England captain. Still, ball was all over bat in the opening exchanges and, replying to Essex's first innings total of 226, Lancashire found themselves on 21 for 3 when Luke Proctor was out for a duck in an innings which lasted 41 minutes. David Masters with the wicket and Jake Mickleborough with the sharp catch at short leg. Lancashire began the day on 7 for 1, but within 40 minutes of day 2 starting, they were on 22 for 4 as Masters trapped Ashwell Prince in front for 14. The opening couple of matches in Manchester had been run fests, but this pitch was clearly offering the bowler a lot more. Thankfully for the home side, there was a rest in the wicket taking as both Simon Katic and Stephen Croft started to get used to the conditions and began to establish something of a partnership for the fifth wicket. It was one which was much needed and it carried the total to 60. Sajid Mahmood left Lancashire under a bit of a cloud at the end of last season, so you can imagine his delight when he struck Katic on the foot to have him LBW for 23. It was his first championship wicket for Essex. And that dismissal left Lancashire in a hole once more. In their last match, however, they'd been bowled out cheaply by Glamorgan before responding quite brilliantly in Colwyn Bay to win by a slim margin. So as Croft and Gareth Cross started to find the boundary from time to time, they certainly wouldn't have given up hope of turning this rather sticky situation around. All they needed to do now was to get to lunch with no further losses. However, that was something they were unable to do as Croft on 31 nicked a short ball from Graham Napier behind. 99 for 6 soon turned into 115 for 7 after the break when Wayne White, having just got into double figures, got himself into a real muddle and lobbed a sitter off Napier to Mark Patini. The start of that amazing turnaround in North Wales last week came from a fine late order partnership between Cross and Kyle Hogg and the two now combined again to close the gap between these teams as much as possible. Once again, it was a very important stand as, on what looked like it may be a low-scoring game, a big first innings deficit would be no hope at all. These two advanced the score along to 159, but on 45, Cross was a judge leg before to Tim Phillips, although he obviously thought he got outside the line. Hogg followed in Phillips' next over, slightly mistiming his shot and giving Topley a comfortable catch at mid-off. And the spinner collected his third wicket in his sixth over to finish off the innings. Glenn Chappell edging via his pad to Patini. Lancashire were all out for 177 to trail on first innings by 49. So, how important a lead was that going to be? Well, Essex had the evening session to see what they could add to it, although at the outset of their second innings it appeared that batting was again not going to be easy, as even someone with Cook skills was beaten by both Hogg and Chappell. Cook, of course, has seen this kind of thing many times before, right around the world in all sorts of conditions. Forgetting the playing and missing immediately, he simply looked at each ball and dealt with it on its merits, scoring as he so often does, square of the wicket with cut shots. He and Tom Wesley had added a handy 44 to their lead before White bowled the latter in an almost identical fashion to the first innings. On day one, the successful bowler was Hogg, but other than that, this could have been a repeat. With 25 overs still left in the day, the last hour and a half or so was going to be crucial in determining which side went to the halfway point of this game in the box seat. As it turned out, it was Essex who, like Lancashire, are looking for their second successive championship victory to really kick-start their summer in the four-day game. Cook was joined by fellow left-hander Bobby Quiney and the pair made batting look easier than at any other moment of this contest to date. Finally, Bat was having some success over ball as this experienced pair added 52 runs for the second wicket. Quiney was dismissed with half an hour of the day remaining, bowled by Chapel, who may look at this later with some concern as to the bounce of this delivery. Cook, however, did see the day out as you might expect and in doing so, he completed his second 50 in four championship innings this summer. It had come off 115 balls and he got there with his eighth boundary. 
not the first one to come down to third man. Cook's wicket is now a crucial one for Lancashire early on day three. That's because Essex going to the second half of this match on top now. With Cook on 57, they will resume on 120 for two, which already gives them a lead of 169. Another 150 runs from here may make life rather difficult for Lancashire. Then again, Glamorgan dominated the first two days of that contest at Colwyn Bay before losing to Lancashire on the third.